Good morning everyone, welcome to my day. Now today is actually the 16th of October 2014 and this evening, UK time, Apple are making some announcements of new products. So stay tuned to the end of this video because I'll share with you my opinion and initial reaction to Apple's announcements. Now yesterday I did lots of unboxings and recording and you're gonna get a little bit of a sneak peek as to what is over here. Now this is great when I give you these sneak peeks because people get excited when they see the boxes on the desk. But over here, this mess is the Sony QX30. And this went up as an early access video to patrons. It will be up on the main YouTube channel very, very soon. And then you're gonna see some of the products I've got lined up here. This is exciting stuff, guys. I've got two Pebble watches. I'll let you know who sent those to me when I do the main videos, but both the Pebble Steel and the original Pebble smartwatch. I've also got some full screen protectors for the iPhone 6. I've got a hard drive tucked away under there as well. I've got a docking station, more cases, uh, some other Wii U bits and pieces hidden away over the back there. And up the top, that is the 2014 99 pound GoPro Hero. I have unboxed that, I'm actually editing the video today. And again, that will be up on the channel very soon. And it'll be followed by me using the GoPro Hero to record a whole day's video for you. So in reality, this morning is some video editing followed by some more editing, and some more editing, and then some more video editing. Wow, what an exciting evening. The Apple announcement has just finished. I've also edited my initial video where I cover all of the product details that were announced in one video, which is about three minutes long. So a nice concise video, it saves you time searching all the information up on various websites. I'll leave a link to that video in the description. Now, I've had time to sort of consume and think about what Apple have just announced. And they announced a lot. They really did. And I'm very, very happy with what they announced. Now, first of all, they obviously covered off the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus launch, which was really exciting to hear about. Uh, one of the most successful smartphone launches they've had, and I probably think any manufacturer has, over that sort of opening launch weekend, they sold so many devices. And then they went on to the new announcements, things like iOS 8.1, Mac OS X Yosemite, which has got some great features in. I've actually been using it on the Mac Mini sitting next to me here for probably about four to six weeks, something like that, in, in the beta form of the software. And it's great that they've done this update to the software free of charge again. Really pleased about that. And that's obviously gonna be available today. I probably won't download it and put it on my work machine until maybe in a week or so's time, until I've checked out that everything that I'm running on that production machine is working okay. I'll probably put it on my MacBook Pro though. Um, and of course on the Mac Mini, I'll update that to the actual launch or the proper version of it. And then we've got the new iPads very good announcement iPad Air 2 which is obviously thinner I think it's something like 6.1 millimeters thin uh, it's got the new A8X processor inside it's also got touch ID it's got an improved display and an improved camera an 8 megapixel camera with a really good aperture and some of the photos that they were showing that have been taken with the new iPad Air 2 were absolutely amazing. So very, very impressed on that front. And three colours. So silver, space grey and a new gold colour to match the recent launch of the new iPhones. So that's really good. iPad Air 2, fantastic looking product. Great improvement in speed and obviously that thinner design. I can't believe they've done it 6.1 millimeters. That's absolutely amazing. Now they didn't give too much detail about the new iPad mini three, apart from the fact that that's also available in three colors and has touch ID and the improved screen. Pretty sure it's got an improved camera as well, uh, but I've yet to research that fully, but it looks like a very interesting device. Didn't like the iPad mini originally, even the iPad mini with the retina display, like the generation two it didn't really capture my attention. I obviously had them in the studio to test, but that was about as far as it went. And then the announcement that was really amazing, in fact, the two last announcements, were um, the iMac with the 5K display. Wow. <laughs> if I didn't have my Mac Pro, my late 2013 Mac Pro sitting under the desk behind me here, I would be all over that. I would be ordering one immediately. It's surplus to my requirements. You know, I've got the Mac Pro sitting there 
with a Thunderbolt display and also ultra widescreen display as well. So I personally have got no use for it. But the specifications are just amazing. To pack 5K display into that thin design, yes, I know it gets thicker around the back, but 5mm thin at its edge is a really good technological feat. It really is. They've done so, so well. And the price point, still good as well. Once you add on the upgrades, I had a quick look through the store, and once you upgrade it to a Core i7 and put extra memory in, etc., etc., the price does creep up very, very high. Uh, but to get an all-in-one computer, I think it's £1,999 in the UK for the 5K iMac is absolutely amazing. An all-in-one computer with that sort of specification for that price will be suitable for a lot of people. I mean, my Mac Pro is probably too much for what I do. You know, it's far too powerful. I never probably stretch it to its maximum potential. And if I didn't have that, then the new 5K iMac would be an ideal machine for editing video every single day. And then the, the final announcement they made was something that really did make me smile because I've been waiting a long, long time for a new Mac Mini. And at last, a new Mac Mini is here. Now, the new Mac Mini has got Thunderbolt 2 on it. It's got upgraded uh, processors. Uh, I suppose they probably made some changes inside as well. It's available with a 500 gig hard drive, a one terabyte or one terabyte fusion drive and various processor sort of uh, configurations as well and various RAM configurations. Now the Mac Mini is not the easiest machine to upgrade. It is possible to upgrade the RAM yourself. It is possible to upgrade the hard drive yourself as well. My current Mac Mini that's sitting over there I've actually upgraded that hard drive to a solid state drive. Yes, it took a little bit of time to do, but it all went back together wonderfully and works absolutely fine. So you can upgrade it yourself. But looking at the Mac Mini, the price point for the entry level one has dropped to 399, which is a really good entry level price point. The version I would want to buy personally would be the top end one and also upgrade it to a Core i7 processor. And when you do that, it's about a thousand pounds or over a thousand pounds. And it makes me sit here thinking, can I really put my funds into something like that? And to be honest, I'll let you know, I, I probably can't. You know, I am not rolling in money. I have a, a hard and fast rule for Geekanoids products, and I've mentioned this in other videos, is that I don't buy a product unless I'm going to use it for production. Okay, so if it was going to be a Mac Pro or if I needed an iMac and I didn't have the Mac Pro, then yes, I would buy it because I do videos on it to share with you guys and girls and then I'd use it every day for producing videos. But if I bought a Mac Mini, the entry level one, it would sit there unused. If I bought the top end one and spent almost, say, £1,200 on it or around about £1,100, then that is a lot of money to invest in a computer that probably wouldn't be used very often because when I don't edit on my Mac Pro, and this is just my use case scenario I'm sharing with you here, when I don't edit on that Mac Pro, I edit on my Retina MacBook Pro. So I've got no need for a Mac Mini. My Mac Mini that's sitting here is really for testing purposes. So when new software comes out, I've got a non-production machine I can load that software onto and if it doesn't work properly then I can still get on with the rest of my uh, jobs and tasks for the day. I can still do my video editing etc. So I won't be getting a Mac Mini in straight away. Uh, if I win the lottery tomorrow then yes I will. If I have a couple of good months where I don't have to replace my central heating um, I don't have to get a new patio done, I don't have the bills that come in every single month when you've got a house, then I might get a Mac Mini in. To let you know what I will be getting in to cover, I will be getting in the new iPad Air 2, I will also be getting in the iPad Mini 3, I won't be getting in a 5K iMac, again, unless I win the lottery, or unless somebody wants to sponsor it, then I'll get it in, uh, but I will be covering the other Apple products. And the reason I've got to keep some funds behind, and I'm always very transparent with you guys, I'll let you know exactly what I'm doing, is that there's also other technology products that I will get into review that I'll also be using on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm going to keep them secret which ones I'm going to be ordering in over the next few weeks. So anyway, I'm going to stop babbling on about the new Apple products. It's been a really good evening. I hope you enjoyed the announcements too. If you're interested in these new Apple products, let me know 
what the highlight of these new Apple announcements was for you. So let me know in the comments section what you'll be buying, what you'll be saving up to buy, what the best product announcement was tonight. Leave it all in the comments section and I will read each and every comment and reply, of course, to as many as I can. So thanks for watching today's video. I'll see you all again tomorrow.